Welcome to Meet the Candidates. I'm Paul Herring, your host. Nikki couldn't make it this evening, but rest assured she will be back. So you guys that are Nikki fans, don't get mad at me, all right? Don't hate the player, hate the game. This evening, I have a, uh, a couple interviews for you, actually. And we're going to start out with, um, actually, I don't even know what ward you're running for. What ward? <laughs> I'm running for a state representative in uh -huh. the 50th District. 50th District, okay. And your name again? Craig Withers. See? <laughs> Craig Withers. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, Paul, thank you for having me, first of all. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in a hard-working family. Uh, <coughs> my mother and stepfather both worked very hard to provide for me and my brother and our two sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have a lot of money, but we had a lot of love. And, in fact, it wasn't, it wasn't until I was in my teens that I realized that we didn't have a lot of money. And I think that's a testament to how good a job my mother did at keeping us focused on the things that are important. Okay. And I think that experience shaped me in a lot of ways. I know how important family is, I know how important hard work is, and I also know how important it is that our hardworking families are able to keep as much money, uh, as many of their hard-earned hours as possible so they can make ends meet. Okay, okay, cool, cool. So you thought about this for a little while, huh? Yeah. Have. have you have you done any other government positions? Have you been an alderman or councilman or? No, I am a precinct delegate, which is a small position, but it's a very important position. Okay. Family man? Yes, sir. Well, tell me about your family. Uh, my wife, my beautiful wife Amber and I live in Grand Blank Township. We have four children. Taylor is 14. She's turning into a fine young woman. Okay. Joey will be 11 in a few weeks and he's the rambunctious one. Okay. Uh, Madison's the princess of the family. She's eight. And then we have Jackson who's 14 months and he's the boss of the family. He knows it too. Uh, my, my wife is a math teacher okay. and it's wonderful for me to watch her because she's committed not just to teaching your students equations and formulas, but to teaching them how to be good people and how, how to be good citizens. We, uh, we live in Grand Blank Township, as I said. We're raising our family here. And one of the reasons I'm running is to help make sure that our kids can raise their own families right here in mid-Michigan. Talk to me about your career and, and, and what aspect of it has perhaps prepared you for this job as state rep. Sure. Well, when I was 19, I enlisted in the United States Navy. Okay. I ended up serving almost seven years. And I really enjoyed my time in the Navy. I met a lot of great friends. I have a lot of great memories, and I visited some great places. And the Navy taught me how to be a leader. Uh, they taught me how to be committed to something greater than myself. Mm -hmm. And they taught me what it means to serve. Um, and I am very proud of my service in the Navy, and I'm ready to serve again as a representative in Lansing. A lot of people aren't clear as to, as to exactly what a state rep does. What are some of the the issues that, that you're going to take up um, if you get this position, and perhaps why? Absolutely. Well, I've been talking to the people in my district for several months now, mm -hmm. and from talking to them, I've learned that there are three issues that are most important to them this year. First is jobs. We've made great strides in the last few years, but we still have a long way to go. Michigan still needs more jobs, and we need better jobs. Uh, and the second thing is roads. It's no secret that Michigan roads are lousy. Uh, and we have to find a long-term solution to not just patch up our roads, but to fix them for the long term. And the third thing is education. Uh, there's nothing more important than the education of our children. Those things are the, those are the things that are important to the people of my community, and those are the things I'll focus on in Lansing. Now, you know, myself included, and others are saying, bah humbug, that's a bunch of hooey. You know, every politician we ever hear says jobs, education, I mean... Okay, those are the those are the big three, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess I don't want to say specifically what would you would would you do for jobs? Are you thinking like uh, uh, public works programs for people since there's so many of us out of out of work? Um, are you thinking about smaller class sizes, uh, uh, raising um, teachers' salaries? What type of things are you thinking about in this arena? I mean, potholes. Mm -hmm. oh my gosh. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well. First, when it comes to jobs, like I said, we've made great strides in the last few uh, few years. Mm -hmm. We still are not there yet. We still need more jobs. We need better jobs. I think we all agree that 
we create jobs by making Michigan more attractive to businesses of all sizes. Mm -hmm. And I think if you take a look at the states that are achieving that and creating jobs, they'll all have a few things in common. They'll have low taxes, responsible government spending, and few burdens to creating or expanding a business. I think those are the things we have to focus on to make Michigan more attractive to businesses and to make it easier for potential entrepreneurs to create a small business in Michigan. All right, cool. Uh, Republican, Democrat, Liberal, Green Party, what are we? I am a Republican. You're a right? Republican. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, talk to me about the emergency manager situation. Do you think there's anything you as a state rep can or would do regarding emergency man? I don't know if you believe in emergency managers or not. Well, I think the, the, the thing is, we all know that there are cities that need help. Mm -hmm. The salute, the, you know, the, Einstein said the uh, definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over the same way and expect different results. Mm -hmm. So we know that something had to change to help our cities like Flint and Detroit. The emergency manager situation is not perfect, but I think it is making progress. I think it's easier for an emergency manager to make some of the tough decisions that have to be made than it is for a city council to do so. Uh, so again, it's not perfect, but I think it's we're making progress. Okay, great. Um, you know, I've got to ask about public access. You know, public access was devastated here in Michigan about eight years ago when the House and the Senate uh, voted for the Universal Franchise, which was supposed to allow for competition. Uh, it was supposed to make it easier for AT&T to get into a community, and instead of having to negotiate with 360 municipalities, all they had to do was deal with the state. But the result of that was Comcast shut down all of its public access centers across the state. Most contracts for 15 years, and they'll be coming up this year. Would you consider any type of legislation to help strengthen the last public soapbox? Well, I think public access is very important. It's one of the last free access uh, that our, most of our citizens have to local government, really. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that we maintain it. If it needs a, a lifeline, I think we should provide it. It's important to keep it going. It's, it's also important to the arts, which we've lost sight of a little bit in the last few years. It's important, it's important to uh, especially get our young children involved in arts and local access. And it's community driven. It costs the government absolutely, you know, nothing. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Is there anything you really want the people in your district to know about you? What do you think is going to just make them punch the ticket with your name on it? Well, I think I have the common sense and the spirit of service to make me a good representative. I'm focused on bringing a spirit of public service and hard work to Lansing to get things done for the people of my district. I know what it means to serve. I'm ready to serve again. And I take this responsibility very seriously, and I will never lose sight of the fact that I am a public servant. Wow. And your wife is uh, in agreement with all this? See, my wife would never let me run for state rep. My wife is very supportive. I, I'm <laughs> blessed to have a very supportive wife, yeah. <laughs> are you? Are you? And uh, you've been in the area. Have you been in the district long? I know you just recently came to Grand Blank, but uh, have you been in the, the 58th for a while? It's the 50th district. 50th. I, I've lived in the district for three years. For three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. This whole experience of uh, being a candidate, uh, it's new to you. Uh, what do you think so far? I, I, I love it. I, uh, I've been very uh, encouraged by the response I've gotten from the people. As I said, I've been meeting the people of my district for a few months now, and I've been very encouraged by their response to my candidacy. And especially I have enjoyed the feedback that I've gotten from them uh, as they've told me what issues are important to them and what they'd like to see done in Lansing. Okay. Any endorsements? Any uh, organizations uh, backing you? Well, I'm proud to have the endorsement of uh, State Representative Joe Graves, State Senator Dave Robertson, uh, and County Commissioner Tony Brown, uh, Grand Blank Township Trustee Larry Anderson, and uh, several other small businesses in, in the area. Okay, well, the race has just begun. We're still in the primaries, right? We're, we're running down to the primaries? Yes, sir, we are. Listen, I'm going to give you the opportunity to look at this camera, and I want you to just, I guess, get me to vote for you. You know, the people at home are watching. It's your time to shine. You know, look them straight in the eyes and, and say why, why they should vote for you. You want to do that for me? Absolutely. Take your time. Well, I believe that I can bring positive change to this area through a spirit of service. I am focused to bringing a spirit of public service and hard work to Lansing to get things done for the people of this district. 
I know what it means to serve. I'm ready to serve again as a representative in Lansing, and I hope I can earn your vote. Well, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet Short and to and the sweet. point. Okay. Hey, you guys are watching Meet the Candidates. I'm your host, Paul Herring. We're going to be right back with more candidates, more information, and more things for you. Right.